Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. Um, so, update on the battery, it's still sitting at 50%. So it did turn white for like the briefest of seconds and turn back to green. So it looks like everything's maintaining on the pocket. So that's good as a travel camera, um, but I'm still tempted to buy that iPhone 11. So, which you will know whether I have it at this point because it's this is like episode number one, two, eight. This will be the eighth episode that, I, that I'm recording tonight. It's actually the seventh because I haven't recorded the vermouth yet. Um, so if I did buy the phone, actually, hopefully I have it at this point because uh, this, this should be like end of September, beginning of October almost. Anyway, so what wine are we going to do? Another really cool wine. So I didn't talk about this the other seven-ish episodes so other than the vermouth and the empathy wine, the other, um, what the other uh, uh, seven episodes, I literally just ran a random number generator. Um, and the first, so I, I did it on uh, what three of the white wines in my cellar and then the other four red wines. So I was like, hey, list the, all the white wines that are not sparkling and not dessert. And it was like one through, I think 21 or 22. And I said, you know, pick a random number. And whatever number it was, I was like, okay, how many rows down? And that was the wine I picked. Did the same thing for the red wines, unless it's a wine that I had set aside for another purpose um, or I deemed is not a reviewable wine. So, um, yeah, talk about picking some cool stuff. You know, uh, I mean, the last, the last episode wine and this wine, absolutely. So let's just get into it. So this is... The 2017 Fratelli Alessandra uh, Verduno Pela Verga uh, Speciale. Um, so this, uh, and I paid $27.89. So I think it's like a $26 bottle of wine, $25, $25 $26 bottle of wine um, from Som Select. So let's just kind of get into this. I'm gonna again read basically the, the entire tasting notes other than what it, they say it tastes like um, because this is another one of wine that was just fascinating and that's why I bought it. So the commune of Verduno is one of the 11 towns that fall within Piedmont's, Piedmontes or Piedmont's Barolo wine zone. Um, let's see here. In addition to Nebbiolo, for Barolo, Verduno is also known for a distinctive indigenous grape variety called Pela Verga. I want to say Perla, but it's Pela. Pela Verga, um, which doesn't grow anywhere else in the world, but here and in parts of two neighboring villages. Man, that cork didn't really want to <laughs> give up the wine, did it? Anyway, um, also, make sure that this is always tightened up. Um, I, I, I tightened it up like the, the episode two ago. <laughs> All right, so uh, still at 50%. So uh, grape varieties don't get more uh, regionally sp specific than this. Only about 20 hectares uh, of this grape are pl uh, pr planted. Um, let's see here. Uh, and then the rest is like kind of what, what the grape would be like. Um, so speciale in Italian is spicy. So it, that I already read that part. It was actually on the back label. Um, let's see. Verduno Pelaverga is the name for the uh, for the name of the is a name for the piccolo uh, strain. Um, piccolo, 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 piccolo strain of this variety, which, as its name suggests, has smaller berries. And clusters than the Grosso version, a distinct sub-variety grown elsewhere in Piedmont. Uh, this version is confined to Verduno and parts of the neighboring villages of Rodi and 
La Mora. You might remember, you might recognize that one for Barolo. Um, and uh, while it is often factored into regional blends in the past, it has developed a cult following as a varietal wine, thanks not only to the excellent version produced by Alessandra, uh, but also their neighbors GB, Berlotto, and Castello di Verduno. Um, this trio of producers has greatly raised the profile of Verduno over the years as their finessed high-toned Barolo wines have garnered really good acclaim. But the Pele Verga has played its part too. Um, let's see here. Uh, essentially an extension of the Lamora vineyard area with similar southeastern southern exposures in the best sites, Verduno's vineyards are headlined by the iconic um, Monviliero, Monviliero Cru, source of some of the truly legendary Barolo bottlings, including one from the Alessandra family. Uh, in total, the uh, farm has just 12 hectares of vineyards, most of them in Verduno, as part of an estate that's been the family since 1870. Uh, John Battista Alessandra runs the show with his wife Flavia, brother Alessandro, and son Vittore. Um, let's see, so this one is sourced from an assortment of small high elevation vineyards in sandy clay limestone soils, uh, fermented and aged in stainless steel tanks, followed by a few months in bottle before release. Um, and then the rest is, looks like is yeah. More about the wine should taste like this stuff. All right, so let's just get into it. So, uh, Fairly light, aromatically, not not very not very highly aromatic. Uh, some red fruit. Nothing's really highly specific on the red fruit. Just like I get like a, a kind of a brighter red fruit. Touch of uh, like brown sugar. Touch of cinnamon, but everything is just like just. Not a whole lot going on. So they mentioned spiciness. I guess spiciness, like like spices. But I really get on the fruit side of this. Um, raspberry more than anything else. Um, Yeah, like definitely some raspberry going on here, um, and some and some like cinnamon again. Almost like a red hot, but not with the heat. You know, the cinnamon, um, touch of clove, but not super spicy to me. But really pleasant, really easy to drink really light. Um, I'm going to assume this is a, a thin skin grape. Uh, even though it's a, even though these are, are uh, they said it was a um, smaller berries that you, so that usually you have a smaller berry, you usually have a higher skin to skin to juice ratio. ratio. <laughs> but I'm going to assume this is also still a thin skin grape because it's not, definitely wasn't a thick colored wine when I was pouring it. It's just got deliciousness to it, but it's not overly complex. Like, I can just totally just, like, chill with this. It's like... It's like a lighter version of Beaujolais. If that makes sense. Just not as much Christmas in the glass as Beaujolais can be. Fruit's kind of tart, but juicy. Acid's definitely high. Mouth is really watering. Um, but So it gives it a vibrancy, a freshness to it. Um, tannin is kind of moderate, almost moderate plus, because it's kind of building up. Nebbiolo does that to me, too. I'll, I'll drink it at first. I'm like, ah, no tannin. And then, like, three minutes later, I'm like, oh, there's tannin here. So this one's kind of catching up on me. I like the wine a lot. I mean, it's kind of expensive, but it's it's like it's like a specialty wine. 
I mean, it's still under $30. You know, it's still like a $25 to $27 bottle of wine. Um, so it's not like crazy expensive. Um, but it's definitely a specialized bottling. So it's not going to be something you're going to get for 12 bucks. Nor should it, nor should it, does it taste like that. But yeah, I'm liking this wine a lot. This is a wine that I, I could just like, just sip and just kind of think. Not just like crush. <laughs> Mainly for that unusual, that unique factor that I'd, I'd want to like savor it. Um, so I could like really just kind of get my mind wrapped around it. Whereas some wines are like, it's just so delicious, I want to drink it. The spiciness is coming through more. There's also a touch of smoke to it. Well, I didn't get I didn't get initially. Really good wine. I like it a lot. All right. Click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below to learn more about this wine. Sorry, I'm just, I'm almost done. But I guess something came through while I was recording this because I'm really starting to stop up. And um, hit the donate button over there. Send me some ducats to help offset the origin trip. We'll see when we get in there.